Hey everybody, it's Alex from Alex and Erica's channel and we recently completed a cruise on the Carnival Celebration and if you have a cruise coming up in the near future on the Celebration, this is going to be a video for you. We're going to talk about what we really liked and some of the things that we didn't like so much about this cruise, so be sure to check it out. So let's start out with what we really liked. We actually did a back-to-back -back cruise on the Celebration. The first week we left out of Miami, we went to Amber Cove, Old San Juan, and St. Thomas. And then the second week we went to the Western Caribbean to Cozumel, Costa Maya, and Roatan, Honduras. This video is gonna be mainly focused on what we really liked and disliked about the Celebration. Also, I know I'm in the middle of uploading videos for our recent trip to Europe. If you haven't seen that series, be sure to check it out because if you're thinking about a trip to Europe, especially if you're thinking about doing that with kids, I've got some great videos. They're pretty informative and it'll give you a good itinerary and some things that you can do as well as tips for you to go to Europe with your kids. So let's start with embarkation. Embarkation for the most part was really smooth. Although the porters can be a little harsh at times, I gave them 20 bucks for our bags, but the security guard to get into the area that we wanted to go, she was a little rough, but maybe she was just having a bad day. But once we got in and got through security and went into the check-in section where we provided our boarding passes, and then we went through security and then our embarkation photos, like everything went really smoothly. We showed up at our arrival time, our scheduled arrival time. It's pretty remarkable when you consider that these ports, especially in Miami, I think Miami is pretty efficient. You, know, you have 6,000 people getting off in the morning and then another, another 6,000 people boarding. And we were on the ship relatively easily and quickly. So the first impressions as we entered and walked onto the ship, you typically enter in on deck six and as you walk in, it's impressive. I, I mean, we really, we all remarked that we really liked the decor. It just felt bright. It was modern. It's impressive when you walk in, if you haven't been to Central Stage or seen Central Stage on these XL ships, the Mardi Gras, the Celebration, and now the soon to be Jubilee. I just, I love those large windows, especially on sea days, just to sit in that area and enjoy the view, I think is really, really nice. And it was impressive. That whole area, that atrium is a really impressive view. So as we made our way through the, uh, the ship, we did a little exploring and then it was time to head to our cabins. We had an ocean suite category. It almost felt like kind of like a camper. Like if anybody's been into RVing, it felt like a regular cabin, regular width, but just an extended version. It was just longer. And we really liked the cabin. You can look it up. I'll have a cabin tour video coming up here shortly. The cabin itself was great for the five of us. This was one of the few categories that will allow five people in a cabin. So we had our TV bed area with our own TV right there in front of the bed, and then plenty of storage, a desk, refrigerator, the vanity in the middle that you guys are all used to. And then on the other side of that, towards the balcony was a big curtain and then a sofa that converted into a like a queen size bed and then a, a Pullman bunk bed that came down from the ceiling. And the nice thing about that particular area too was that it had its own TV. So the kids could kind of hang out there and watch their own TV and do their own thing. Not that we're in the cabin watching a lot of TV, but you know, just in the mornings and the evenings when we're going to sleep they might want to watch something so the cabin itself was great our cabin steward was very friendly i know a lot of people have talked about how cabin stewards maybe aren't very personable like they were in previous years i think they're just spread so thin these days they're asked to do so much our cabin steward i think she said that she had 35 cabins that she was responsible for she wasn't out in the hall she got her work done and then she was in her office or out of visibility but the unique thing is every time we called her to ask her for something she was always available and she was always quick to respond or if she was on her break then one of her assistants were always available and there were a couple times when we called just to get some additional towels after the first day or two she picked up on that we just needed a couple extra towels each day i think as i recall our, our cabin was on deck six in the aft we liked this particular location it was one to two decks uh, below kind of everything we wanted to be going to or where we were going oh and the storage was excellent there's plenty of storage i mean no storage is always a topic that people talk about a lot but we uh we didn't have any issues with storage uh, we felt like it was adequate and so the last thing i'll say about this cabin but it wasn't so much about this cabin it's just i think it's just a factor with a lot of the newer ships is that some of these balconies like our particular balcony was on actually i have to correct myself our cabin was on deck nine cabin nine four five eight and our opinion was that this was a great location we were just above everything else we spent a lot of time on deck seven and deck eight deck six seven and eight is where kind of the three levels where a lot of the activity is and so i just felt like it was easy to get access to everything as i talk about later on in the video the elevators 
um, in our particular location, I thought were, you know, it was an ideal location for what we were wanting to do. The other thing regarding the balcony is that the balcony does extend. It's, it's a little bit deeper of a balcony than typically, but it's extended out. So when you walk out onto the balcony, you look up, everybody can kind of look down right on you. That goes with a lot of balconies. And then if you, as you look up, you can also see into everybody else's balcony. And a lot of the glass on the Celebration and the Mardi Gras is clear. So it doesn't give you that same privacy where some of the other uh, ships that you've been on probably have some film on the glass that kind of gives you a little bit more privacy. It did have the feel of kind of being in a fishbowl, so it kind of depends on your preference. Also, we were right above like the pig and anchor, so we had that extension of the roof area, which was just a big white roof. So it's not an obstructed view, but right below you is a big white roof. So it's not like you're looking down over the edge and you can see the water right at the bottom of your uh, balcony. Also, one thing about the beds, I saw several people commenting about this in various Facebook groups, and they would say that the beds were like hard as a rock. We thought they were great. I've always thought that some of these beds, especially on older ships, whether it's Carnival or any cruise line, sometimes they get too soft. Like they're really comfortable, but if you have lower back issues, which I tend to have some lower back issues from time to time, I want a firm mattress. And so I thought the mattresses were fantastic. I mean, they were definitely on the firmer side, kind of felt like similar to my mattress at home where it's more of a Tempur-Pedic, but I thought it was great. But if you're used to a soft mattress, I know that I've, I've seen some people talk about requesting like a pillow top and whatnot. It's a firmer mattress, but if you like a firm mattress, I think you're gonna be very, very pleased. Also, here's a quick little photo I, I shot of the, uh, the fans. When you get on the ship, you can request them from your cabin steward. They're available on a first come first serve basis. And then there's these shower chairs as well. If you need a shower chair, these are available. The one thing also I really liked about this style ship is that there's no more shower curtains. The shower curtains, I think are just kind of, I don't know, they kind of drive me crazy. I know when I've been on other cruise lines like Princess or Norwegian, I really like a traditional like shower door. I don't know, it's not that big of a thing, but I just really prefer that over like a shower curtain that just seems like it's never really very sanitary. <laughs> I like a nice clean shower door. And so if you like the shower doors, you're gonna be happy with this uh, Carnival class ship. Regarding the staff, we found the staff to be extremely friendly when i know when we were leading up to this cruise i watched a few videos about you know getting some feedback on on what it was like to cruise on the celebration and a few people had said that they thought that the staff wasn't very friendly i don't know maybe you know when that when a cruise ship starts out a lot of those people kind of come on for six to eight ten months for their contract and then they take that break they go home for a couple months for a vacation and then now we're kind of right back at that 12 13 month period of like the celebration being around or maybe a lot of that original staff or some of the cream has kind of risen to the top where you know they're they're really focused on just having the best highest rated staff on these ships we found the staff to be great everybody we talked to was super friendly i know when we go on a cruise or when we go to a hotel or any type of vacation i usually always try to like lower my expectations to zero like i i go on there with just an open mind with no expectations even having been on almost 40 cruises i um i just go on there and i i look people in the eye i try to remember their name pronounce their name correctly um shake their hand really you know take interest in getting to know them as a person and i have just found that over the years especially on cruising people will just go out of their way to just be friendly and and that was the case i mean we you know, usually it seems like every cruise we have a couple people that we keep in touch with through, so, through uh, social media and whatnot. And I felt like we we had like a dozen people uh, this cruise that we kept we have kept in touch with that we just had great relationships with. So um, we found the staff to be very friendly. And I think the other thing to keep in mind is like yes, we're we're a couple years now, kind of coming out of this pandemic, but. You know, a lot of people that were working in the cruise industry, they're not working in the cruise industry anymore. And so it's been a huge adjustment for these cruise lines to just kind of hire people and then not, not only just hire people, but to train them and get them up to speed, get them up to the standards that they are expecting. Um, so that's a process. And I think the last couple of years we've been on five cruises, um, five or six cruises, all of them have been pretty good. Now, the first cruise or two after the pandemic, there were certainly some issues and you could feel some shortages on the staffing side, but with the celebration, we really felt like the staff was fantastic. 
So as far as the shows go on the celebration, we thought overall they were really good. Comedy is usually kind of like leading the way for us. We usually try to go to a lot of the comedy shows, but we saw um, Celestial Strings. That was a good show. There's a circus show on there. I don't, I can't remember or recall the name, but the circus show was actually really engaging. We took the kids to that. They really enjoyed it. My experience with a lot of these shows, and I know that some of the feedback with the central stage has been that it's been very loud. We tried to always get there and sit there um, you know, relatively close to the stage on deck six, especially if we were bringing the kids, because that's just an easy way to keep them more engaged. If the show is right there in their face, they really have a hard time getting distracted. We thought the shows were very good. Now, um, the one thing I did notice that some people made comments on early on when they were on the celebration is that getting seating for these shows was very difficult. We didn't have that issue. And I think if there was an issue, they've corrected that issue because the one thing that we did notice is that after every show, they cleared the um, they cleared the lounge, they cleared all the seating areas. They closed it down. Similar to what they do in like the main theater, they had the little partitions up that they would um, put up and everybody had to leave, exit, and then they cleaned up and made way for the next show. And so that doesn't allow people to just kind of sit around for an hour before the show and just hog a couple chairs. Um, we found getting decent seats for the shows were not an issue. And the first week we had about 6,000 passengers. And I think the second week we had about 6,100 passengers. So we had a fairly full cruise both weeks. The other thing too is the roller coaster, the Bolt. That I thought was great. It was $15 to do the roller coaster. You made the reservation through the Hub app. The hub app was a little glitchy at times, but I thought for the roller coaster, you know, although you just go around twice, so it's not, you know, it's not a long ride, but typical to most roller coasters, I almost kind of enjoy the fact that there's a little bit of a premium to pay because if it was free, I'm sure the lines would just be horrendous. We did the roller coaster on the last sea day. Um, it was a little chilly up there, a little windy, but we had a great time. I thought it was a lot of fun. Erica, her brother, Benji, seven or eight of us that were in the group all did the roller coaster and we, we really enjoyed it. So let's talk about the main dining room, the MDR, which is always um, a popular topic, a controversial subject. We took this cruise right when they introduced some of the new menu options. Look, the MDR is putting out thousands of meals. Like they're, they're, they're cooking for thousands of people every night. Going to the MDR is not what it was 20 years ago when you'd go and you'd have, you know, 800 people in the dining room. Um, well, even those ships, I'm thinking of a, a smaller ship. There might've been 1,200, 1,000 passengers. And I remember at the time thinking that was a huge ship. Um, so you'd have a first uh, a early seating, a late seating, and there was no open seating back then. Um, so you'd have five, 600 people you'd have to feed in the early seating, another five, 600 people at the late seating. Look, I thought the food was very good. The first week we were traveling with 17 people. 17 people in the MDR is a real pain. Um, going through the reservation process and whatnot. So if you are booking and doing a cruise with a, a big group, make sure that all your reservation, all the cruise reservation numbers are linked. Even if you booked through different travel agents and whatnot, if you contact Carnival or the person that you uh, booked your cruise line with or your cruise with and give them all the reservation numbers for everybody in their group, they should be able to link them all together. And that's gonna make it so much easier when you go to check in at the dining room and you can just check everybody's cabin or everybody in the group that you wanna uh, check in for the reservation. That will make the process much smoother. But again, the MDR, like the first night, is kind of a disaster because everybody's trying to figure out where to go. Nobody knows where the tables are at. There's big lines. People kind of grouchy because they've traveled that day. They're tired, they're hungry. They may not have their bags yet. Um, so just have patience. And if you're going to do a specialty dining option, the first night is never a bad night to do specialty dining because you can kind of eliminate some of that pain that you may experience going to the, the main dining room. So that's something to keep in mind. But the interesting thing when we compare the MDR, when cruising wasn't taking place and we were doing some all-inclusive uh, hotel options, Eric and I would always talk about how the uh, the dining options at some of these all-inclusive resorts, although some were pretty good, a lot of them were just not that great. You'd have to do the same thing, kind of make a reservation, go to like the four or five restaurants that are included in your fare. Um, and we always told ourselves like after every meal, like some of them were good, some of the meals were decent, but we'd say, man, we really miss, you know, going to the main dining room on a cruise ship. 
Um, and we always said, we can't wait till cruising starts up again because um, we always found ourselves enjoying the main dining room um, much more than a lot of places that we'd find at hotels. You see a lot of people run to like a Facebook group to complain when they have an issue. And I know that when you express your concern to someone in the, uh, in the restaurant or like, you know, the assistant maitre d', maitre d', your waiter, they want to go out of their way to make it right for you. They're going to do everything they can to please you and put a smile on your face. So I'd say, you know, make it a point to just try to express those concerns and I'm sure they're going to do what they can to make it right. So the first week we did this cruise, we had 17 people. We only did specialty dining one night. We did the steakhouse and it was only the eight adults uh, did that. And then we put the kids in the kids camp and we had a great time. We had eight people at the steakhouse. We really enjoyed it. We it was probably the best meal we had all week. Whereas the second week it was just Eric and I and the kids and we did specialty dining like almost every night. We typically always really liked the steakhouse. We thought the steakhouse was great. We did the tapenaki the second week. We had a great time in tapenaki. That was, as expected, really good. We did shebang one night with a big group of us. We did it both weeks. Our personal preference was that the Chinese options were a little bit better than the, uh, the Spanish dish options. But just again, personal preference. And then we did uh, Cucina del Capitano. We did that a couple times. And I know the first, uh, the first night you go to Chebang, it's free. Then the second time you go, it's eight dollars. And Cucina, when we did the cruise a couple of weeks ago, was free as many times as you wanted to go. But I just saw an update from John on his Facebook page that now the first time at Cucina will be free, but the second time you want to go will be eight dollars. The mussels and clams that they had at Cucina, um, the Capitano, were really good. When we went the second time, Benji, my brother-in-law, and a couple other people in the group, they just actually ordered a couple plates of those clams and they just skip the uh, the main the main dish because they really enjoyed it everywhere we ate we we thought it was pretty decent um everything we thought was pretty good and then pig and anchor um pig and anchor and the sports bar um the sports bar were right next to each other in the back of the ship there's also a pool back there which is nice look if you're used to like texas barbecue you're going to be probably disappointed with pig and anchor but you know for an alternative lunch option from time to time we went there a couple times and we enjoyed it um the one thing that we noticed on port days is that uh, Pig and Anchor had like an express Lido buffet just, uh, and that actually worked out really well because Lido was kind of a little busy when we would go to the marketplace to get breakfast before getting off the ship. So we would just go to Pig and Anchor, just get a quick snack, some fruit, just something relatively easy uh, so we could get up and get off the ship and take advantage of whatever port uh, we were at. And so that was something to keep in mind that Pig and Anchor in the morning sometimes serves as a second um, alternative option for breakfast. And the items in there are very similar to what you find in Lido Marketplace, but it's um, there wasn't much of a line to go down and eat there. We ate at the Shack's uh, Chicken Place. We ate there twice over the course of the two weeks. Well, the kids ate there a couple times. They had chicken tenders every time they were there. It was good. There were plenty of sauces they really liked. Um, I had the chicken sandwich the first time I went there. I thought the chicken sandwich was very good. And then the second time I went there, I had the uh, chicken tenders. And I thought, again, kind of as expected, I thought I thought it was very, you know, I thought it was good. I thought it was, uh, it, it was what I was expecting. Um, and then Guy's Burger, we only ate there once or twice. I think maybe once. We always like a good burger. And I think Guy's Burger is really good. Uh, we just find ourselves just not eating as much during the day sometimes because we really want to capitalize and be hungry for dinner. So, um, but the, the one time we went to Guy's Burger, um, it was very good. The thing that's nice, it kind of threw me off. I'm so used to Guy's Burger being on deck 16 on the celebration, it's on deck 17. It's out um, kind of off on its own, which is nice. And it has plenty of space. The few times I'd walked by there, there was always like a steady flow of traffic, but the line always seemed to move pretty quickly. Sushi, we did go to sushi a few times. That's always a big favorite for the kids. They usually like, like a California roll, and then they also usually really enjoyed the ramen. So we went in to get ramen a couple times, and then Eric and I usually like split that sushi uh, boat, and that's always very good. We enjoyed it. Again, right next to the tapenaki, and the staff there is very good. If you've cruised with Carnival for a couple of years, you know Sea Day Brunch has been a nice alternative on sea days. Um, but the menu has kind of been watered down a little bit, but it's still pretty good. Like, eh. personally, I go back and forth. I kind of like the Lido Marketplace for breakfast just because I can get, you know, typically what I want, maybe a couple hard boiled eggs and just, you know, and you can get most of that stuff at the sea day brunch. Um, but the lines, uh, 
the line was noticeable a couple times when we went, um, but we enjoyed it. We also did the Dr. Seuss breakfast. The Dr. Seuss breakfast, maybe, maybe the last time we do it. It's $8 per person now, which is not that bad. And maybe it's because there were a lot of people there. I don't know. Maybe the kids are getting older. Maybe they've done it a few times and they're so used to it, they don't get as excited for it. But if you haven't done the Dr. Seuss breakfast, I'd say do it once. It's $8 per person. I think you'll enjoy it. It's fun. The kids can get pictures with the characters. Order some green eggs and ham because that will surprise you. We've had some funny laughs over the years when we've had people get their, literally their, their green eggs and ham. And you know, we enjoyed it. We had a good time. Would we do it again? Not because of the sea day brunch or not because of the Dr. Seuss breakfast itself, but probably because the kids have just done it um, a few times now and they're, they don't get as excited for it. I thought the Lido Marketplace, you know, for breakfast, lunch, or maybe even dinner was, was good. I thought that they had a good selection of uh, options available. A couple times we'd go there before we take the kids to camp, just to get them a quick snack. Um, you know, I felt like it was always pretty fresh. I liked some of the salad options, the ability to make your own salad. You know, at times it was a little congested. Like if you get up there, you know, the morning, let's say you're going to port, everybody's up there getting lunch or getting breakfast. Um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be busy. Uh, and that's kind of why we like the uh, the alternative that we found at Pig and Anchor because we could get a lot of the same things and just get in and out a lot quicker. Um, but I found the Lido Marketplace to be fine. Uh, we enjoyed it. It was totally sufficient. And then around the pool area, they have a couple street eat options. There's some stir fry with rice. There's uh, some fancy fries uh, just for a quick little snack. And if you want something to nibble on around the pool, that was a good option. And then they also have the seafood shack. Um, the seafood option, I know that's a paid option. Erica really likes it. She loves the garlic shrimp there. The kids love the garlic shrimp there. So we found ourselves going there a couple times to get some, um, some seafood. Um, they didn't mind, you know, Erica doesn't mind paying a little bit of money for a meal. If you know Erica, uh, she really enjoys her food. So if she knows that she's going to get something she really enjoys, she doesn't mind paying a little bit of a premium to get it. And uh, the garlic shrimp, we had a couple different times throughout the cruise and it was really good. We did a couple other things that were new for us. One was the bistro. Bistro was a paid uh, option. Really enjoyed it. Like everything we had there was really good. Uh, we did that the second week when it was just the five of us for one of our uh, evening dinners. Um, and also in the mornings, it's a good alternative. I know everybody goes to the uh, Java, Java Blue Cafe to get their coffee, um, but you can go to the bistro and you can get your coffee there. And it's, um, they had a great espresso. That's where I got espresso a couple times. And, um, and that was a good option to get a coffee because the line was often much shorter there. So the other thing we did in addition to the um, seafood shack, the other specialty dining is Rudy Seagro. This was new to us. It was the first time we'd been there. Same price is the steakhouse. Kind of felt like a seafood version of the steakhouse. Although we found the food to be very good, but just overall the decor and the just the feel in the the restaurant didn't feel as warm um and inviting as like the steakhouse so i'd say look if we're going to do it again we would just go back to the steakhouse and do that again the steakhouse has some um some seafood options and we really enjoyed the steakhouse um rudy Seagro was fine the food was the food was good but um i think for a similar price personally we'd probably just go back to this to the, uh, the steakhouse again. And then the last thing we did as far as specialty dining goes is the chef's table. Now the chef's table, we've done a few other times on other cruise ships. This was by far our favorite chef's table experience. Um, if you are thinking about doing the chef's table, I'd say do it. You're really gonna enjoy it. You're gonna have a great time. Just the, the presentation, um, the meeting point, going into the kitchen, that, that experience of just going into the kitchen and seeing everything in action in the middle of like prime time dining and there's just so much activity going on uh was really fun you have a little champagne you kind of get started with a little appetizer clean your palate there as you're standing in the kitchen and then you go into this other room that's where you have the the dining table where you do the sh the actual chef's table um, and the thing that's cool there is you have these really large windows that you can look out and you can basically see the kitchen there in front of you so um, we really enjoyed it. We, we had a fabulous time. We love the chef's table. Um, Erol, uh, if you're watching this video, thank you for everything you did for us um, on the two weeks that we were on the ship. Uh, you are fantastic. Everybody in your team was fantastic. Um, I thought all the dining experiences were great and uh, we really, really had a great time. And the three other couples that were with us, they were all on their first cruise and they all 
are going to be back to cruise again soon. We have a lot of experience uh, with Camp Ocean. We send our kids there a lot uh, when we go on a carnival cruise. They always have a good time. The kids, for the most part, really enjoy it. It was the same with the celebration. That I think, you know, as a parent, you're always concerned with, like, you know, handing over your kids to someone else and are they going to be in good hands. And, man, the staff, they always feel like they really go above and beyond. And our kids always have a great time. The interesting thing is that on our last cruise a few months ago, there was a lady in there that remembered Aiden and Ethan from our previous cruise when we did the Pride in Europe. And when we were on the celebration, same thing. There was another lady there that was on the panorama a few months ago when we were on that cruise. She had gone home for a couple months and then her new contract was on the celebration. I don't know, maybe we've, we've probably just been lucky, but it just makes the experience so much better. Um, and then with Emma, because she's still um, on the younger end, they'll give you a cell phone. Um, the cell phone is so if there's an emergency, they can get a hold of you. And a couple times, you know, she was crying a bit or she wasn't, you know, she was being a little restless and they called. One time in particular, they called in the middle of a comedy show and we were sitting right in front. It was kind of embarrassing, but it was funny. I went and dealt with it. Um, and they were just calling to make sure it was okay for them to give her a bottle, which we had told them in advance. Yeah, no problem. Just, you know, six ounces of water, three scoops of formula. She's good to go. And so, but they just wanted to confirm, which was nice. Um, and then they, they let us know that she was fine. She had fallen asleep. And when she was crying on another occasion, they brought her brother over from the other side because he's in the older section just to counsel her and make her feel more comfortable. And then once she fell asleep, he went back to continue doing his thing on, on his side within his age group. So we've always um, enjoyed Camp Ocean. And then we usually always do the premium, like the babysitting service from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Um, so if you're having any hesitation, I don't know. I, I think that they do a great job just make sure you register your kids in advance, fill out the paperwork, and then on the embarkation day, you can go and um, register. Just make sure that they have all the information and everything's complete, and then you can drop them off throughout the week. I think they do a great job. And that's all I have to say about camp. Camp was fun. The kids enjoyed it. They had lots of activities for the kids. No, the other thing too is when you use the Carnival Hub app, it's interesting because I feel like sometimes the Hub app just shows you like all the important things. But then when you go up there and then you filter it, if you filter it, let's say by like kids activities, you'll see a lot of other activities that show up sometimes that aren't there when you're just kind of scanning over the headline. So make sure if you have kids, um, go through and filter it by activities, you know, whether it's outdoor activities, food activities, kids activities, I think they can sort um, with kids by age. Do that because there's a lot of things that are often overlooked that are happening throughout the day for kids. And then, um, the other thing that's nice too is that you are getting your daily itineraries on your cabin every night, which is nice. We really like that even though everything's in the app. We really like to see that breakdown. But when you go to Camp Ocean for the first time, there's usually three stacks of itineraries for the week and they're by age group. So pick um, the one for your age, whatever, if you have multiple kids, get one for each of their ages. And then look at that because you'll, you'll be surprised how many activities are on there throughout the day that you don't even realize are there. And they're kind of buried in the app, but they're right there in the printed activities. Um, so make sure you do that. There's things like, for example, the, you have the Dr. Seuss parade, right? The Dr. Seuss parade is a lot of fun. It's uh, you do the parade through the main corridor. Sometimes it's a cruise director Lee, you know, they lead you through and then they go to the main theater and then they do story time. You know, it's simple but it's a lot of fun and the kids, especially if you have younger kids, they really enjoy it. A couple more items um, on the things that we liked. The pool uh, area was fun, a little busy on sea days. Um, a port day was nice because there was definitely more, more space in the pool. Um, the water was a little bit on the cold side, but if you're looking for something a little bit more, um, a little bit more mellow, um, the serenity on the, on the celebration was fantastic. It was large. The pool area, you know, on sea days was a little busy too, but there was so much space outside of that pool area that if you wanted to just find a spot to relax, Serenity was a really great option. I was trying to convince um, the group the first week just to put the kids in the camp for a few hours, um, which we should have done. I should have been more insistent on it. Um, put the kids in camp and then go to Serenity for two, three hours just to enjoy like an adults only uh, afternoon. 
Um, I think that would have been a lot of fun. That's what I would do if we weren't traveling with kids. And then the casino. The casino, um, although it was a little tight and there was only one crap stable, and I really, for me personally, I like playing craps. Usually, most cruise ships, you always have two crap stables. The casino was large and there was always a lot of activity in there. You know, outside of being a cruise ship that's like based in Asia where you might have a two story casino, this was a big casino. Um, this casino it was, it was large, um, it was clean, it was always pretty full of people. Sometimes the casino bar is always like my go-to option when I need to get a drink. And the casino bar was always full. So there was just, you know, the casino was fun. Although I heard a lot of people saying that the machines were very tight. It was a fun spot, it was in a good central location. We did play craps a couple nights. Erica played on the machines a few times. We had a good time. It was a big casino and there was a lot. There was a lot going on in there all the time. I, I was surprised like how many people were in the casino all day long. And then the last thing, the last thing that we really enjoyed about this cruise is cruise director Lee. I don't know where you find the energy Lee, like your enthusiasm, your passion, your energy, the way you interact with everybody. I mean, you can tell you're a really genuine person and we had a fantastic time. We really, really, really had a great time. Uh, you're right there at the top of our favorite cruise directors to cruise with. And I know some people will say, look, I don't take a cruise to go, you know, chasing after the cruise director or really care who the cruise director is. But I'll tell you, from my experience, the cruise director can really just set the tone for that particular cruise. Even with things that you may not interact with on a, on a, you may never interact with the cruise director on a regular basis. But think of him being like the director, the guy at the top of that hotel department and just the morale, like the, the mood that he sets, you know, from just being super positive and um, setting the tone with all the employees and all the staff that are working under him, it makes a difference and it's noticeable. And I don't know if it's because of Lee, I don't know if it's because he's constantly just like bringing so much energy and he's so positive, so upbeat, but we really enjoyed it. Our interactions with you were fantastic. Um, and I really felt like everybody from everybody working on the fun squad all the way down. I think everybody really enjoys working with you. And I think you do a great job of kind of setting the tone and, and making an environment that is going to just be a fun spot for people to go and have a vacation and just have a great time. So thank you. We had a fantastic time. You were definitely one of the highlights of our week or our two weeks on the ship. Now, not to be not to be Debbie Downer, but I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things we disliked on the ship. And although there weren't many things that we disliked because we really had a great time, we found this is pretty typical, but the elevators on embarkation day, especially were really kind of a pain to deal with. But then the other thing that's typical and that's going to happen on just about any cruise. But the thing that was noticeable is throughout the week, the elevators were so hot. It felt like there was only like a couple times when you walked in and the elevator felt like there was getting air conditioning felt like throughout the whole week, the elevators were really, really warm. And then the middle, the set of elevators in the middle of the ship, I know one of the elevators was uh, out of service the, the two weeks that we were on. So that probably made a big difference. Um, but we found ourselves oftentimes walking to the back of the ship. This is why we kind of liked our cabin back there because a lot of the things that we were going to were kind of in the middle to the back of the ship. And so we often found ourselves just going to the back set of elevators and sometimes to the forward set of elevators and using those because they were much faster versus waiting in the middle of the ship. The other thing too, like I would say that sometimes like the elevator etiquette is a little disappointing. Um, sometimes people are waiting in line and people just cut them off. And I tell myself like, you know, I grew up, not grew up, but I spent five years living in a high rise. Um, you know, I'm used to using elevators a lot of times. So I maybe, I just remind myself that maybe these people have just never been around elevators before. So they just don't know really kind of proper elevator etiquette. But I found myself like seeing people that were on mobility scooters, you know, often being, you know, overlooked and trying to make sure that they were getting access if they were there, giving them access to the elevators. But there were times when there were like people that were like, you could clearly tell they were sitting there waiting for a few minutes and then other people would just walk up and just walk right in front of them. And they'd be like, dude, just have some like common decency. You can tell that person was there before you. Let that person go ahead. And um, oftentimes when Erica was using the stroller with the kids, 
If she got a spot on the elevator and it was busy, I would just take the stairs because I could. Um, but not everybody can, especially if you've got a stroller, you got a mobility scooter. So I tried to just go out of my way to make sure that everybody was being seen. And I would, I don't know, I would hope that everybody else would do the same. And there were a few times when the, the, the crowd on the ship did feel a little congested, did feel a little busy. Like, I really loved the celebration. We had a great two weeks on this ship. Um, we had we created some fantastic memories, but I personally really enjoy a ship that's a little bit smaller. You know, if it's a carnival ship, you know, the Spirit class, Panorama, um, I know that's a bigger ship. Um, some of those ships just don't feel as congested all the time. So we really enjoyed like the Spirit and um, the Pride, uh, the Miracle, because I found that those ships, when they've gone through, um, when they've been refurbished, um, they usually have all the same amenities or very similar amenities that some of these new ships have, but the crowds are often much, much smaller and it never really feels too busy and too congested. Like when we did our 10-day uh, Europe cruise a little while ago, a handful of the people in our family were on that cruise and they were doing their very first cruise. And I'm so happy it was on that ship and it just never felt too busy because I think if it would have been um, a little busier or on a newer, bigger ship, it would have been a little overwhelming for some of the people in the group. So I would definitely go on the celebration again. I'd definitely go on. But again, if you followed us for a while, we usually pick cruises based on itineraries, places that we want to visit, and not necessarily the cruise ship. Although the cruise ship is important, we want to go on a nice ship. We want to go on a ship with a lot of amenities and you know good dining options and good shows. We'll usually kind of focus on the itinerary before the cruise ship. And then um, I think the last couple things, just negative people in general, there were, there were, you know, you'd see even people in our Facebook group, they'd be kind of negative at times. And I just, I just feel like that's just like um, probably that energy that they probably bring to everything they do in life. You know, they're probably just fine. Just, you know, no matter what situation you're in, you could find a lot of things to complain about. We could have found stuff to complain about all day long on this cruise. But when you factor in everything else and the fact that we were with a great group of people and friends, um, we had a fantastic time. Yeah, there were a few things from time to time that were a little frustrating. Crowds, the elevators, but you know what? You just got to go with the flow. The last thing that I'm going to talk about is just the, the Carnival Hub app at times were a little glitchy. And I think that has to be just a geography, a GPS type thing because they, were, they kept, for example, like on sea days, even though I had it set to airplane mode and I did everything just like they, they told you to do, it would kept defaulting to the following day. And so that would be a little confusing because we sometimes we weren't seeing the activities that were really available. We were seeing tomorrow's activities. So the Carnival Hub app, I think is, uh, is decent. It was a little glitchy, but like I said earlier, make sure you dig in, you dive right in and filter out the results because some of that stuff gets buried. Um, but the Hub app is definitely better with it because the, um, you know, just having access to the schedule and whatnot is great. And then if you are also someone in like, uh, in our situation, we're not, not everybody is gonna have the internet. Um, just pay for that $5 chat plan, because that chat plan for five bucks per person is actually pretty handy. And it really does come in handy throughout the week when you're trying to communicate with your group. So that's it. I think um, I tried to cover as much as I could about what we liked, what we disliked about this ship. It was way more that we liked versus disliking. Um, and overall, we had a fantastic time. So hope this video helped. If it did, share it. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you liked or disliked about the, the celebration. I'd love to hear more about what you thought and how your, uh, your cruise was. So hope you found it helpful. Share it if it was helpful. Uh, leave a comment and uh, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks.